Welcome to the GSMC Pets Podcast, the show that caters to pet lovers of all kinds. We'll talk about pets on social media, pets doing amazing things, and how to take care of the pets in your life. Whether your pet is a dog, a cat, a llama, hamster, reptile, or something more exotic, you'll find educational and entertaining information on the GSMC Pets Podcast. Once again, for tuning in to the GSMC Pets Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I'm your host, Alex Fletes. Now, if there's one thing I find that's interesting, it's that how animals are able to not only adapt to their environments, but the unique abilities that they have to allow them to thrive in such environments. And that's kind of the topic I feel like discussing today is animals and their unique abilities and some of the really surprising things that you probably didn't know some animals could do. And of course, there are going to be some I'm sure you heard of, but I still want to take some time to talk about this topic with you guys today. Now, starting off the list, I'm going to start off with something a little simple. I'm sure a lot of people know this, but a lot of animals, mainly nocturnal animals that have high hunting prowess from the owl to, well, even your common house cat have this really cool ability, the night vision ability. Night vision is honestly a really cool ability, and the way that it works is pretty fascinating as well. So if you've ever, say, uh, you know, been walking down the road and, you know, maybe, or maybe you have a pet cat, and as you're walking, you just kind of happen to see something glowing in the distance, two little eyes staring back at you that's that really awesome night vision ability and it's not like it's a turn on turn off sort of deal like you know you get a pair of military grade uh night vision goggles and then you just turn it on due to um special lights and cameras but rather with uh these type of animals it does something a little bit different by using reflections and uh natural light so while I'm not 100% on all the biological terminology here, I do know the base of this really cool ability is that there's sort of like, as I've been described, um, sort of like special sort of reflective material in the back of the irises of these animals. And what they do is they take the natural light, so in this, let's just say, in the wild, a uh, natural predator, like maybe a jaguar or something that hunts pretty well at night, um, will have a reflection of usually the moon's light to help them see better in the dark. And it's really fascinating to know that that kind of built-in ability is given to these creatures. And we as people have adapted to that sort of ability as well with our own man-made versions. However, having that natural innate ability is really fascinating. You know, as people, we do have the ability to see in the dark to an extent if it's natural, but we never will have that same level of night vision as these animals can. And it's really fascinating to see that happen. Uh, so just imagine you're out and you see well in the daytime, but then the second night comes around, it's like, ooh. It's almost still like a day to me. It's it's really cool. It really is a really cool uh, ability. And there are a lot of animals that can use this, but there are other abilities who use very similar uh, abilities as well. I'm sure some of you have heard of the term echolocation. Uh, so I actually did talk about this in my last podcast about how some animals use echolocation to... Uh, determine where their prey is or determine where certain things are. And it's kind of a really, really, uh, compared to night vision, it's more of a technical ability that's a little trickier to explain, but I'll try. So, I believe dolphins and bats use some of these, but I'm going to focus on dolphins right now because if I remember correctly, they sort of make a clicking noise, like a kind of like a clicking, chirpy noise. 
and as they're underwater, the noise that gives off sort of spreads out, and then it bounces off of other things. So if you were in a wide open area, let's just say you're in a large room that has nothing in it aside from like one chair, and you had this echolocation ability, you'd make a noise, and then all the sound would sort of spread out around you, and then when you hear it hit something, it would let you know, oh, there's something in that direction. It's difficult unless you're able to actually exercise this ability, which is why it's so cool, too, because we as people wouldn't be able to comprehend this ability without visual aid. But this is made so that way people who don't have that visual aid can see it. It really is amazing. But we have people have sort of used some of this to our advantage to uh, really... I guess, sort of adapt that for larger scale use. After all, we do have things like sonar and radar, which do roughly the same exact thing. But that's because we have a visual aid to show us. We don't use a natural echolocation or a sonar or a radar to um, sort of feel or hear things. Sure, occasionally we may use, say, an echo if we're in a big open cave to sort of like say, oh, huh. I guess this is a lot bigger than I expected, or wow, this room's a lot wider, but it's not something we quite often think about, uh, and it's pretty fascinating to see these kind of creatures do this sort of thing. I've never personally gotten to see or hear echolocation being used by dolphins, since where I am, we don't really have the capacity for dolphins, but one day I am determined to get to see, or rather experience this ability firsthand. Along with that... The night vision ability that I've already uh, explained is a much more common ability, but I feel like it's very underlooked, especially for you cat owners. I think you understand this ability, but you uh, don't quite grasp the real amazingness of this ability, and that's... You know, uh, you don't have to worry about things like uh, your cat being lost. Your cat knows where it is, especially at night. It can see its trouble. It's it's really good because night is honestly one of the roughest times for any creature, mammal, aquatic or not. Because if you don't have this ability, you're pretty much a sitting duck. You are leaving yourself open and vulnerable to anything and everything that could hurt you whereas creatures that have this ability can immediately pick up where they left off if they decide to take a nap is if they get started up by something they are immediately back up and running they can see what's coming at them it's it's a really cool ability that honestly if i have one of these abilities night vision would probably be like in the top three but i don't think it's going to be my top ability um but it is still fascinating you know um Along with that, echolocation is definitely a really cool one. Uh, echolocation, having the ability to see, I actually do think that there are humans who can actually use this ability too. If I'm correct, there are people who can't see who will actually make a clicking or some kind of chirp noise um, with their mouth, a trick they picked up. So while they're walking, they can actually sense where something is. I think that is actually, there are some cases of that happening. If I remember very frequently, there was a movie, I think called The Book of Eli, where the main character played by Denzel Washington actually did use this ability to an extent. It was a small underlying, like something kind of there that you didn't really notice, but it did give you hints about the character, which was really cool. Um, so it, it is possible. And a lot of times people do mimic am animals and there are probably several other examples of this happening that I definitely want to bring up to light in the upcoming hour of this podcast. But with that being said, uh, just kind of think about any other abilities. And as we continue on today, definitely uh, feel free to leave a comment through the rest of this episode if you have any abilities you think that should be mentioned. I'm going to be bringing that up. And I'm also going to relate these back to uh, man abilities and things that we as people have definitely borrowed from animals in our lifetime. Because if we can't learn from animals, then what are we doing? There are several instances of people learning and adapting from animals and vice versa and that's honestly one of the best mentalities to have when it comes to 
nature is to not simply just take from it, but to learn from it. If we're taking anything, we should definitely take some knowledge from nature, so that way we can better ourselves without fully impacting the delicate ecosystem that is our environment. But with that being said, we're gonna take a short break,、uh, so you guys are gonna hear a word from these messages, and I'm gonna go and practice my echolocation. But until then, please enjoy. We'll be right back. Are you tired of the same old news? Are you sick of the seemingly endless political spin and negativity? The GSMC America Still Beautiful podcast is a weekly news podcast covering all the top positive and uplifting news stories. We cover stories that will inspire, uplift, and remind you of the good in the world. Tune into the Golden State Media Concepts America Still Beautiful podcast to get all the great and positive news stories of today. Download the GSMC America Still Beautiful podcast on iTunes. Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type GSMC in the search bar. Back. Thanks for tuning in. So we're talking about the special abilities of animals today, and how fascinating they are, and what we learn from them as well. So we just talked about night vision and a little bit on echolocation, two really awesome abilities. But now let's step it up just a notch with another really great ability today. We're talking about mimicry. So mimicry is just like it sounds. The ability to mimic other things in your surroundings,、uh, and even sounds and straight up colors and appearances. So there are a few animals that can do things like this.、Um, you know, one of the、uh, sort of lesser examples would be something like a chameleon that I've talked a little bit about already. But a chameleon has the ability to change its colors to、uh, blend into its surrounding. But that falls more into the line of Camouflage. Now, camouflage is a type of mimicry, but the chameleon only is really able to change its colors、uh, based on certain things. In fact, a chameleon might change its color to say a bright red or even a blue, not really to match in with backgrounds most of the time, but also to sort of deter predators. So. If you remember、uh, from a few podcasts ago with my、uh, exotic animal episode.、Uh, Animals, specifically reptiles or amphibians that have a lot more brighter colors, like reds, blues,、uh, really bright colors, are usually a fair warning to any of their pre- predators that、um, they shouldn't eat those because they're usually very poisonous.、Um, But in this case, a chameleon does sort of that to both show, "Hey, look at me! You see these colors? You see these colors? Yeah, don't eat me! Don't eat, eat me! I might be, I might be poisonous. I might be kind of poisonous here. You probably shouldn't eat me." Along with that, it also can show its potential mood or、uh, potential that it's in danger. So it's sort of a multi-layered ability. But there are animals who actually do mimic very well. So, since we're still on the topic of sort of amphibians and reptiles, let's talk about the two aquatic creatures that really take use of mimicry. And I'm talking about the physical mimicry of octopi and cuttlefish. So, these guys are some crazy mimics. And if you know anything about me, I'm a huge nerd, and D and D is definitely something I'm fascinating in. And as you always know. If the table laughs, if the chest has teeth, you kill it because it's a mimic. <laughs> okay, but enough of that.、Um, so, with octopi and、uh, especially cuttlefish, they have really, really cool abilities. So they are more gelatinous creatures, meaning they have, I believe, they're invertebrates, so they don't have any bones. Obviously, they don't.、Uh, if you've seen any of those kooky videos of octopi escaping. Uh, they can kind of squeeze through really tight spaces because they have no bones, so they're basically like water and jelly inside of their bodies. So they find a small crack, they will slip right through it. But what's really cool is the ability to move their body and change their body shape. 
So octopi actually have color changing abilities as well. Uh, so maybe they're swimming on the surface and a bigger predator might come around and looking for some food. All an octopi has to do is to uh, find a nice spot, maybe like some rough sand or maybe even among rocks, and will simply just kind of shimmy its way into the sand and will change its color. Uh, usually going from maybe it could be a reddish color or a gray color and it just kind of changes to like a bright white or a sandy color. It can change its body to match the surroundings of the sea floor typically or even things like rocks. Now, with that, a cuttlefish does that and then some. While octopi can do this to an extent, typically a cuttlefish does something really cool. And this is really, really awesome. I've seen it done. It's crazy. So cuttlefish kind of look like octopi and squids. They're interesting creatures. But what these things do are, while they also can change their color, they also change their body shape. So I've really seen this really amazing video of an of a cuttlefish that was uh, trying to hide from some predators, and it actually, I believe, buried itself near some uh, rocks, and then actually went from a smooth texture, and it turned itself into a lumpy texture, and it looked just like a rock. And if you weren't watching the video, like, if you weren't watching the video from beginning to end, you wouldn't have been able to tell where this cuttlefish was, and it was amazing. It's something really fascinating that um that animals like this can do uh and that also kind of makes me want to talk about another topic that i'll get into in a little bit because along with mimicry we also have on the opposite end we've been talking about animals that live in the water but what about animals that live in the air birds have really fun mimicry because unlike uh fish that really don't make any noise birds make all the noise and especially with the lyre bird, the lyre bird not only is able to do really, really cool things, you know, stylistically with its body, it also has a really unique ability to imitate over 20 different bird species. It can imitate the cries of over 20 different bird species. And it also knows how to imitate man-made sounds, car alarms, and even chainsaws on some occasions. That is a really impressive form of mimicry because while in the pursuit of trying to find a mate, the lyre bird can imitate other bird type species, it can also apparently imitate human noises within its range. That's pretty impressive. Of course, my personal favorite bird, the crow or the corvid uh, genus of birds, uh, are not only known for sort of mimicking uh, sounds, they can actually mimic some human speech. Um, along with that, they kind of imitate some human behaviors as well, but it's not a survival thing. It's more of, hey, we can do this and we're going to mess around with you. And that's why I do love those birds. But that does make me want to talk a little bit about human mimicry and how humans have mimicked animals in the form of mimicry. So while uh, birds and fish and other animals have taken a thing or two from humans. Humans have also taken something from them in the process. Um, so if you've ever known me, one thing you should know is that I also do love things that probably don't have any relevance, but a lot of history and interesting factoids. I love a lot of Japanese culture and the culture of the ninjas have always been fascinating to me because of their ingenuity and how a lot of um, ninjas were basically farmers who uh, were tired of being taxed by the uh, rich and powerful imperialists and decided to do something about it. It's fascinating. But one thing I did find interesting is that they actually did borrow a lot of things from animals to uh, survive more in the wild. Uh, one of my favorite things is actually how, just like how animals mimicked their surroundings humans also learn to mimic their surroundings specifically with different techniques and very subtle techniques as well one example is that if in pursuit of chase all sometimes a ninja would do was simply curl up into a ball near a rock or something and they blend in 
or they just would blend in by simple movements. I believe a lot of this was actually imitating the ostrich and the ostrich's uh, weird habit of putting their face low to the ground to avoid predators. It was interesting. Along with that, um, one thing I find very interesting about what they took um, was from creatures that climbed up in trees very often, like raccoons and possums. And fun fact, raccoons in Japan are called tanuki. So the tanuki no gakare, or the uh, art of the raccoon, would be where ninjas would actually climb up into high places because humans didn't tend to look up higher than uh, their line of vision. So they could usually hide from people by being about a good two or three feet higher than them and they would never really notice. So by sort of understanding and following how animals functioned, they actually were able to become more efficient uh, warriors in the field. And warriors are a pretty loose term as well. But it's kind of cool how we're able to give that kind of back and forth from animals and vice versa. It's always amazing knowing what we can take from animals, but also what they can take from us, specifically how well they can imitate us just to mess with us. But with that being said, it's time for another break. So please enjoy these messages as we continue on with more of our amazing animal abilities and some of the cool things you might not have known and maybe what you can give back or what might come from us to them and stuff so definitely stay tuned as we continue please enjoy tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts now listen close and hear this out there's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching the golden state media concepts podcast network is here Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter. And download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just like that, we are back again. Thanks for tuning in, folks. So we have been talking about amazing animals and their amazing, unique abilities that you probably don't know about or just really haven't put much thought into, but that's what I'm here for. So what's probably one of the most creepy, kooky, you know, probably unfathomable abilities that an anim animal could have? Uh, night vision? No. Uh... Being able to hear enemies or prey or predators from miles away with just sounds and echo radar? No. Uh, how about regrowing limbs or pretty much restarting your whole life? Yeah, that's a pretty good one. So, there are a lot of animals, quite commonly invertebrates, that have this really crazy ability to essentially restart everything about them or to take care of any major injuries. Now, some animals do have incredible uh, ways to heal or have ways to actually uh, essentially take care of themselves uh, whenever they need to. But a lot of these have really weird abilities um, or just really impressive ones. Now, Here's a pretty easy one for you. Um, lizards. Lizards, uh, primarily, you know, normal lizards and I think some geckos, uh, have the ability to discard their tails. Uh, unfortunately, it's not always useful because for some lizards, they only can use this once and then the rest of their tail will maybe grow back partially. Um, but it's a really good uh, escape tactic. So let me paint you a picture uh, from the human perspective. Um, you have a very large backpack filled with 
uh, important items you need, maybe medical supply or maybe some food, and you're being chased by a large predator, whatever you want. In the process, the predator manages to grab you by the backpack and you want to survive. So in the process, you quickly rip off your backpack and then just start running while the predator's munching at the backpack. It's essentially like that. Um, or if you want to get more macabre, 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 if you want to get more um, gross, uh, let's just say instead you have a leg and the same thing happens and you're able to quickly detach your leg and run away somehow, um, essentially like that. So a lot of lizards do have this ability. Uh, a good bit of them can grow their tails back, but not all of them. But it's a very useful one-time use ability if you are in danger. Now, what about growing them back? Well, there are still a fa fair amount that actually do that. But besides just growing them back, there are some interesting other mammals that have some abilities like this too. The spiny mouse has a very interesting ability that it can actually discard chunks of its own skin and re to release itself from a predator's clutches and then also apparently regrow some of it back too. It's a little bit of a grody ability, but it is a cool ability nonetheless for a mammal to have that. So while lizards may have the ability to, say, lose a tail and grow it back, um, for a mammal to have that, like the spiny mouse, is definitely a rare and unique ability. But now, what about animals that can fully regrow parts of their bodies? Well, we're going to have to take another trip down into the water to meet, well, your favorite uh, Hawaiian shorts-wearing... Uh, you know, celestial being shaped uh, creature, the starfish. Um, now, while it doesn't wear shorts, it really doesn't need to because it has the amazing ability to, if a part of it grows back, it can simply regrow it. You know, if in some freak case, um, you know, maybe it's attacked by a natural predator like a seagull and a piece of it gets eaten and it manages to get away, a starfish can grow back parts of its body. Um, this is actually really fascinating too because uh, apparently if it's quote brain is you know messed up it can regrow it it's really honestly an amazing ability that it really goes unnoticed because people find starfish to be unremarkable starfish are very interesting creatures um, they don't do a lot but they are capable of a lot of really impressive things and the question is, can they do these things because they are simple creatures? Or is it because maybe there's more going on than we realize? Hmm. But that does bring me up to the next and probably the most impressive of these amazing abilities. And that's got to be jellyfish. Specifically the scarlet jellyfish. Now, jellyfish may not seem like very complex creatures, but they have a lot going on inside of them that we just don't realize. And that's mainly in the fact that a scarlet je jellyfish has a really crazy ability to not simply just regrow limbs, but rather to restart its life. And what I mean by that is, if a scarlet jellyfish has some major injury to it, um, you know, tentacles lost, perhaps it was injured by a predator that is capable of eating jellyfish because there are predators that can eat jellyfish. I think the sea turtle is one of them. Then the jellyfish, specifically the scarlet jellyfish, can actually return back to the ocean floor and turn itself back into a polypuff. Polypuff? polypy which is basically a juvenile form of a jellyfish and then it spends a couple months regrowing back into its normal state and apparently this isn't a one-time thing either apparently there, there have been witness reports by uh, scientists saying that this cycle has been done over 12 times so that is very impressive in any type of biological creature you know plants have the that's that's their standard thing is regrowth you know plants injured if you can take a certain piece of it put it back in the ground it'll grow back it'll do it it'll just grow back again it's really amazing how resilient plant plants are but to have something that is a natural biological creature a living uh breathing or rather a living pulsating creature to be able to restart its life cycle and continue living as though it was good as new is really really amazing 
And I believe there's constantly those ads saying that uh, we can use this new protein found in jellyfish to help with uh, mental disorders or to help with uh, cell loss and stuff like that. So that is a pretty fascinating thing that we can take from animals, but do we take too much from it? Uh, it is important to study these kind of topics because it can benefit humans. However, in the process, we shouldn't take more than we need. Uh, if SpongeBob's taught us anything, it's that we can't take from creatures uh, just because they provide us some very delicious jellyfish jelly, or in this case, some very prof- proficient proteins, but rather we should be able to study and somehow learn to uh, coexist with these animals that can benefit us and benefit them. We just have to make sure we can get to that place in due time. But between vertebrates that are able to discard pieces of their body and somehow grow them back to invertebrates that can regrow their brains to completely gelatinous forms that can restart their whole life if they're having a bad day well that's just pretty amazing to be honest um now would i say that's probably in my top three abilities nah because you know i personally would like to just make sure i have some kind of advantage but not like the greatest advantage because it's kind of an easy way out for me but then again i'm not a jellyfish living in the ocean so i don't have to worry about that but i will worry about what my next choice will be very soon but you guys should stay tuned for that but i hope you guys are enjoying this and if you have any comments or have any abilities you think are amazing, please leave them in the comments of the video because that definitely does help us out. It does help me find more topics to talk about for you guys because I know what you want to hear. But I really hope you're enjoying this. Um, as well, I think we're going to probably go back to the vertebrae very soon and talk about some animals that have more aesthetically pleasing uh, abilities but still are pretty awesome abilities nonetheless. I hope you guys enjoy. Now, we're going to be taking a short break in just a moment. And when we come back, we're going to talk more about some more animals and their unique shifting of appearances. But in a different way, you're not quite sure you can agree with or not. But we'll stay tuned and just listen in just a minute. So until then, enjoy these messages, and we'll be right back. Is weird, odd, strange, or just plain bizarre is really your cup of tea? Then, the Golden State Media Concepts Weird News Podcast will give you that fix. Can't believe it? Well, listen for yourself as we deliver the strangest news you definitely won't find on CNN or Fox. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Weird News Podcast. talking about interesting animals with very interesting abilities and we've talked a good bit about some of the uh interesting uh internal abilities and some physical abilities but let's talk about some of the weird things some of these animals can do with their bodies now warning this might get a little creepy and kooky but not any worse than it really has been but just let you know we might be talking about some of them uh creepy but that's okay because we have a lot of other cool ones to go around as well. Let's start kind of light with pygmy jerboas. These guys, they look like rodents. They're very interesting, but they have almost kangaroo-like legs. These are small little mice, and they have kangaroo-like legs. They have about... Ooh, wow. This is pretty interesting. So their body length is about one, two to three inches. That's barely the size of your hand. And... They can jump about nine feet in one hop. These little itty bitty things can jump about nine feet. They are really fascinating and they are just honestly a sight to behold if you look at them. Um, This is definitely one of those unusual abilities. You know, kangaroos have the ability to hop, but you know, it's not that 
unremarkable considering their size, but these little things have such a hop. It's fascinating. Along with that, we also have some pretty interesting ones too that go a little more with your bodies, such as Tasmanian Devils, which actually have the ability to make loud screeching noises and offensive odors when it's stressed. So there are only a couple of uh, mammals that'll do this, um, but sort of becoming completely unpleasant just to get people to stay away from you is pretty interesting. And we have talked a little bit about Tasmanian devils in a past episode, but having the ability to make loud screeching doesn't seem that impressive, but when it emits a very offensive odor to because it's stressed out, that's kind of an interesting one. Now, skunks have a very similar ability to this because of their stink sacs. They're able to actually spray with uh, intent to offend. But having the ability to secrete a very obnoxious smell due to stress is kind of a different but interesting um, ability. I know that humans have a similar ability, but I think that having sort of this internal defense that can probably deter most predators uh, just simply due to being uncomfortable is kind of interesting, in in my opinion. Now, I will talk about one of our more creepy ones right now. So, we have honeypot ants. Honeypot ants are really weird because, well, these guys, they're ants that are fed by worker ants until they're so engorged with food that their abdomens will actually swell really huge. I'm looking at this picture right now. And if you looked at it, it's kind of like if you ever seen one of those goofy pictures of a big brain, uh, and it's like a person with a normal body but an extra large brain almost the size of their body, it kind of looks like that. And then basically, the ants can hold on to these food and then use it as nutrients, so in the events that they run out of food, they'll actually be able to like sort of take that food back in. So it's kind of like their camels, how they're able to hold on to their nutrients. It's really interesting. Since we're still on the topic of uh, creepy crawlies, we have the assassin spider. So this is a really rare one because while most spiders actually have, you know, they are kind of cold killers in themselves, ability to sneak around and capture bugs, the assassin spider is actually different because it actually hunts other arachnids and this spider grows to about almost an inch long, so 0.8 inches. So an inch is pretty big for a spider very big honestly and having the ability to have venom that'll actually be able to affect other spiders is pretty special in itself as well so there are some other type of animals out there that hunt is somewhat in its own species or have the ability to take down something bigger than itself but having a very lanky spider that actually is able to match in size and then have venom that affects it is really unique in itself but there is one i've been really excited to talk about too actually so the chameleon we have talked about the chameleon earlier and we've talked about the chameleon in a previous episode but i want to spend some time on this so having night vision is honestly a really cool ability but with chameleons they have 360 degree vision So, yes, chameleons can walk on walls, change colors, do a lot of really, really cool things. But the 360-degree angle is really cool. Now, if I personally wanted an ability, being able to see behind myself is definitely one of them. Although, I don't think I would want eyes in the back of my head or I would want my eyes to be able to move around. But having that ability is still cool. And because of the chameleon's more flat-shaped head and having eyes that can move around, it really is fascinating. Now, not all species of chameleon have the camouflage, but being able to have camouflage and then essentially being able to watch your own back and see in any direction you need is really impressive. Humans can see most directions except, you know, their direct back, but chameleons have that really unique ability. And I think that would be one of my top five abilities right there, simply because getting to see where you need to be or what's around you, getting to have more uh, observation of your skills is pretty fantastic. So, adding on to interesting physiology, there's a hairy frog, and it's called the hairy frog, or the horror frog, because it actually has, well, hairs, and rather, 
it, it's called it, it's called the hairy frog because it looks like it has hair on it. But it actually, this is kind of creepy here. When it's threatened, it'll actually break bones in its toes and forces sharp, sharp bones through the skin to be used as claws. It's called the hairy frog because it kind of resembles hair because of its bones. But that is honestly frightening. But if not, it's a pretty cool ability. Essentially having uh, built-in claws, although it might hurt like heck. But then again, frogs are pretty, uh, not gelatinous, but they have a more uh, soft body tissue, so it might be easier for them to manage. But that's a pretty Wolverine ability right there, and I think that's pretty awesome. Um, which also, fun fact, I'm sure if you've watched any of the movies, you might know this, but Wolverine, his, the comic book character, his claws are actually not made of metal. They're actually bone claws that are reinforced, uh, with a metal coating. So, essentially take that ability that the hairy frog has, and then put metal around his body, and, around his skeleton, and you have a frog Wolverine. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. That's kind of awesome. Uh, there are some pretty other really amazing abilities as well. Uh, I think this one's actually definitely a really creepy one, but you know, since we're on this area, we might as well talk about it. The trapdoor spider, uh, a very fascinating spider that, well, at the end of its abdomen, this is more interesting. So at the end of the uh, what people would look at as the butt of the spider, um, it's sort of oddly cut off, but in replace it has a more hardened disc on its back, which makes it look more uh, solid, almost like a rock, or in some cases, it actually looks like a doorknob. So this is an interesting ability because um, it's actually like a neat reinforcement on its back area that I've never seen something like that before because, you know, how often are you going to get close to a trapdoor spider? It's pretty freaky. Uh, but one last one I really want to talk about in this segment today has to be one of the coolest things ever, the ballast lizard. The ballast lizard, or as some people call it, the Jesus Christ lizard, is really amazing because instead of actually swimming, the lizard's long floppy feet and uh, front claws actually allow it in its weird motion to uh, actually run on the water. Now, it's a weird type of swimming but it is swimming due to its height, its weight, its built, and then it just sort of runs and flops in the water. And if you ever, ever take the time on YouTube to go look up any animal, go look up a ballast lizard and watch it run on water. It is amazing. It's one of the coolest abilities and definitely an awesome ability I wish I have. It's got to be like right there, my like top three right there. So it's an amazing ability. It's a really impressive lizard. It's like one of the few I've ever seen be able to do this. Um, there are a couple other animals that can do stuff like that, which I'll definitely talk about in the next section. But for right now, we're going to take another quick, quick break uh, to hear some words from our messages and sponsors and whatnot. Uh, but until then, I hope you guys can think of some other really cool animals to talk about in the description, in the comments, and tell me what you guys think. But until then, stay tuned. The Golden State Media Concepts Travel Podcast, the show that gives you advice on everything travel. We explore places you've always wanted to go, as well as giving tips for traveling in those places. We'll give you advice on the best sites for travel tips, information, and discounts. Join us as we travel the world, explore cultures, and meet new people. The Golden State Media Concepts Travel Podcast has got you covered. Download the GSMC Travel Podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type GSMC in the search bar. gone for too long but we are back and here to talk about more animals with unique abilities 
Now, one ability that I really want to highlight from our previous section is the ability to walk on water, which is a really cool ability which doesn't get used very frequently except in very rare circumstances for very, very specific types of animals. Now, I mentioned the ballast lizard last time, which is, again, the Jesus Christ lizard. Very awesome because it runs on water. It sort of runs and kind of flops around like a little dope. Uh, dope, but it's really adorable to watch, and it, the way that it's doing this is actually the way that its uh, hind legs are running. It's actually catching little air pockets to step into, which is really, really cool. Um, it's pretty fascinating. If you've never seen it happen, it's definitely something worth watching. On top of that, we have other lizards that actually do something very similar, where they sort of gasp onto little bits of water. Um, and of course, we have some pretty easy ones as well. Uh, we have, for example, the water striders, which are just simple bugs, which the way that they're designed is actually pretty cool. Water striders actually sort of, um, they, they have very narrow legs, and they use these legs to sort of also grasp onto little air pockets and sort of just float and stride on water. So if you ever see them, they actually do resemble... Um, those long-legged uh, sort of canoes or kayaks that you might see in more indigenous um, uh, cultures uh, where it's a boat but it has longer um, ballasts on the end to keep the boat uh, level. So in ha heavier or harsher water conditions, they can hit the waves or they can sort of uh, hit the environments a lot more uh, effortlessly, which is pretty awesome, honestly. Um also, a really fun fact, I'm going to take just a moment to uh, talk a little bit more about culture. Like I've said, I really, really enjoy uh, ninja culture, Japanese culture, and the history of ninjas and shinobi. Uh, and on top of this, um, this is all very reminiscent of a myth that uh, ninjas were able to walk on water. Um, this is a myth. It's not exactly fully proven that ninjas had this ability. But what is proven is that they did have tools to sort of assist with the process of moving through water. But a lot of times they believe that ninjas had special um, shoes which sort of resembled like a, a long sort of flat hula hoop sort of thing. And it was believed that these shoes could grasp the uh, air pockets as it moved across the water and allowed for ninjas to sort of uh, shuffle across the water very slowly or effortlessly. Uh, unfortunately, this seems like it's mainly just a big rumor, or uh, as far as I know, it's not been 100% proven. But what is proven is that a lot of these animals have that ability, and hopefully we can actually use this knowledge to possibly further our research on uh, human buoyancy. For example, fishing spiders, which, believe it or not, are ridiculously impressive because they are indeed fishing spiders. These spiders use the exact same methods to be able to stay on the water as the strider or most of these other uh, creatures where they skim across the water due to small air pockets. And when they detect ripples in the water, they actually will use their webs to catch creatures like fish in the water. So they will actually throw nets into the water to catch fish, and it's ridiculous. And they'll more likely drag it onto the land and... um you know, do their thing from there. So, uh, grody, but very impressive. Um, it's really crazy. And they'll actually even like go underwater too, to help catch the prey. It's honestly crazy, but going from more of the creepy crawlies to more of the, um, fun and happy and chipper fellows, dolphins, dolphins can kind of walk on water. They are mammals. So technically they're, they're not fish. So, you know, they can't stay in the water. But they live their entire life in the water, just they don't breathe water. It's it's interesting. What's really interesting is that dolphins do, in a sense, uh, walk on water. Uh, if you've ever seen dolphins do that really fun uh, sort of backwards scooting tail motion, that is really cool. Um, it's sort of the way their tails are made allow them to um, sort of uh, keep afloat on top of the water as they keep scooting. And they do it really fast, too. Now, so people will wonder, what's the tactical advantage for having this skill? Uh, does it help them evade uh, pre uh, predators or do anything? Honestly, no. Uh, this skill is literally just for fun. Uh, dolphins might do this just because they want to show off, or maybe because they've been trained by humans to do this, but to be completely honest, they just do this for fun. There is 
no benefit. It's it's literally the same reason why humans might whistle or snap their fingers. They do it for fun and because they can. And if anything, why not have an ability that you can do just because you can? I mean, if you can think back to any abilities you might have, how many times have your friends done something like your double-jointed friend has moved their wrist a weird way or put their arm behind their back or something? Or maybe you have a friend who's capable of doing a backflip. While it is an impressive feat, it doesn't necessarily help in everyday life. Now, if they do acrobatic stuff for a living or perhaps they... Uh, pursue more acrobatics, yes, then that is a valuable skill. But in all reality, it's not a useful skill on a regular day-to-day living. And that's literally what the dolphins are here. They're like, hey, dude, check this out. Just skeeting on the water and stuff. And it's honestly pretty funny. And I love the, the, the fact that dolphins are just so unconcerned with anything that they can just pick up a trip, a trick like this and do just that. And one of the last creatures I really will talk about is that uh, is actually a bird. And it's kind of interesting because there are birds that can actually run on water. You know, you may think ducks or geese have the ability to walk on water, and they, they kind of do, but they don't actually walk on the water. There are some geese that will um, sort of flap their wings and flutter across the water to, um, you know, maybe like to get some attention or to scare away something. But... In all honesty, they will only take a few steps. But the storm petrel is actually very more interesting because it's actually a smaller bird, about the size, maybe a little bit bigger than a robin, so very small bird. And it actually, it's not really walking, but rather it's hovering very close. So it's actually fluttering its wings and it's floating right above the water, touching it very frequently and giving the appearance that it's Naruto running across the water. <laughs> But, um, honestly, it's pretty interesting, though, because, uh, their, their legs are actually too weak to support it for more than a few steps, meaning it looks like it's walking, but it's really not. And, actually, it has to move around this way, because if it tried walking or tried doing a lot of distances, it would actually, they'd probably drown pretty quickly. But the ability to imitate the look of walking on water, that's some, you know, that's some uh, David Copperfield slash um, Chris Angel level of manipulation there, and I like it. Uh, so rather than actually having the ability, but making people believe you have the ability is just as good too, especially if it's a way to get around. So that's pretty fascinating, and I honestly would have to say, if if we were talking about unique abilities... If we're talking about just any animal ability, I'd have to say having the ability to fly would definitely be on my list. But for unique abilities, it's really limited. Having the ability to walk on water is definitely one of the coolest abilities. Just to imitate it, to look like I'm walking on water, would be really, really fascinating to have. And it's definitely one of my favorite abilities to see that animals have as well. Um, I definitely think that animals have so much unique potential and so many things that we could actually learn from them. I don't know how often we do take into these considerations what we can learn from them, but this is a good time to really look upon that and see what we as people can grasp from animals. Um, And in just a bit, we're going to go on a break. And when we do go on break, I do encourage you all to think of any other animal suggestions you might want to cover in the future, uh, any abilities or any unique animals that don't get enough spotlight. I already have a few in my head that I'm going to talk about very soon that I'm sure you guys will enjoy. And as always, make sure you keep learning, keep trying to pull something from these opportunities to learn, because it's my job to teach and educate. That's what I pride myself on doing. But regardless, we'll be taking a quick break. And as we continue forward, uh, we're going to be talking more about some a different type of animal abilities, if we can call them that, and just where their inspiration comes from and why I feel it's important to know about these. It's going to be an extra special surprise, so stay tuned, and we'll be right back after these messages. 
Want to find out what movies to go see? Then check out the GSMC Movie Podcast. It's your ticket to the latest movies, whether it's a new blockbuster event, romantic, comedy, or action flick. This show has got it all covered. They talk some what to go see now. Don't bother. What's hot on Netflix and everything in between? That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash movie dash podcast. When it's all about the movies, it has to be this new show. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. You've made it back, and we have so much more to talk about in this last section, but I'm so glad you're here today. So, as I've stated several times already, I'm a huge nerd, okay? And one of my favorite series is Pokemon. And if I can work in any of my nerd love into the series, I will. And I felt like this was a really good option to really get to talk about some things that you don't realize how often or how frequent real life and nature can affect or influence uh, media, television, and video games and other things we take in. So if you've never played a Pokemon game, which is understandable, some people, a lot of people haven't, but it is one of the biggest franchises out there, people have put it under scrutiny as glorifying animal cruelty, which, you know, if you were looking at it from the surface, could be the case, but I want to shine some light on how in-depth the series really is, specifically what they decided to do with the Pokemon and their abilities, because Pokemon have innate abilities. Some are very simple abilities, some are more complex or derived from the actual biology or real-world relation of them. For example, one really effective ability called Aroma Veil, which protects your allies from moves that limit their choices. Basically, this is a move that, uh, due to the uh, sense the Pokemon is able to give off, can protect them from uh, certain moves that would give them like limitations, like you can't use this move. Well, guess what? Uh, by distracting your opponent, you've actually taken away that specific um, ability. There are other ones as well, such as Battle Armor or Big Pecs would actually help you uh, boost your defenses. Uh, Battle Armor specifically, uh, it protects your Pokemon from critical hits. So if you think to, for example, um, Armadillos or even, um, I believe it is the Badger. Uh, The Badger is very interesting because uh, it has a lot more thick uh, hide on its back, so what might be considered um, a weak spot, like the back of the neck, is actually a very tough spot to uh, deal damage to a badger. Same thing with armadillo, it has thicker armors. Um, and then we have some other really, really cool abilities as well. We've already talked about chameleons very frequently, but one more time, uh, there's actually a Pokemon whose exclusive ability, meaning only this Pokemon will know it, is color change, which actually changes the Pokemon's type uh, depending on the foe's move. So if, for example, the foe used a fire-type move, the Pokemon would change to a fire-type as well, which is an excellent uh, representation of a chameleon changing its uh, color spots to uh, sort of change its, its uh, appearance based on location or situation. For example, a chameleon might change its color to a dark green or brown to blend in to avoid its enemies, but then... It might also change its color to a bright red or blue to confuse its enemies to make it believe that it's actually poisonous, like we've already mentioned before. So that's actually a really good example of that. Let's see, on top of that, there are several other ones. Compound Eyes is a really fun ability that mainly a lot of bug-type Pokemon know, and it actually boosts the accuracy. And if you've ever seen Compound Bug Eyes, for example, on a butterfly or maybe even bees, their big round bug eyes have little sort of hexagon patterns on them that let them see in more directions at once, which is actually very free. Um, it's a very representative ability as it boosts the Pokemon's accuracy. Very, very useful ability, honestly, when you think about it. Um, on top of that, there are several other more 
obscure or um, sort of like uh, tough to comprehend abilities. Like, for example, there are abilities like um, Rough Skin or even abilities like Drizzle, which you think, what benefit is Drizzle when it um, makes it rain when you went to the battlefield? Well, this is actually beneficial because there are animals that do benefit from being in a more rainy environment. A lot of times, um, specific water types um, that are based off of, say, toads um, or more semi-aquatic creatures uh, will benefit from being in the water because, you know, sometimes they need to hurry up and escape into a liquid environment or it causes your opponent to uh, misstep involving its uh, area. Along with that, there are several others. One of my personal favorite abilities is uh, Emergency Exit. So when your Pokemon's HP reaches about 50%, you immediately get out of there. They switch out or they leave, and it's really great because there are Pokemon, or rather there are animals and Pokemon that are more likely to flee from a battle than actually try to fight. There are animals that will actually try putting on a tough front, make themselves look bigger, but will actually use cheap tactics to run away because they're not trying to uh, fight and win. They're trying to survive, which is definitely a very, very useful ability to have. On top of that, there are several other other abilities as well. Um, Let's see. How about... I mean, there's some pretty simple ones as well. We've already talked about how uh, badgers have more of a uh, intimidating ability, which is also a very, very simple. Um, it's a very simple but very um, effective Pokemon ability called Intimidate. Which basically, if you use Intimidate, the second your Pokemon goes into battle, it intimidates the other Pokemon and cuts their attack in half. Very useful ability, uh, especially if it's say a much bigger target intimidating a smaller target or for example if you walk in the wild and you run into a tiger or a lion pretty sure it's going to use intimidate on you so it's definitely a relatable ability and uh very useful on top of that there are even other abilities as well i mean there's simple ones like levitate which give your a pokemon immunity to ground type moves but that's pretty obvious you know um animals that are on the ground will be affected by things on the ground animals that fly are not affected by things on the ground um it's really interesting on how well these actually do relate back to real world animals and can actually um really be interpreted by how well they're uh used i mean personally when we've just been talking about all day mimicry there's a ability called Mimicry, which changes type changes a Pokemon's type based on uh, the terrain, which we've been talking about a lot today, is how animals can mimic what's around them, what's happening, and will be really beneficial if you know what you're doing. Um, these are really fascinating moves and fascinating creatures um, that have actually gotten a lot of influation and a lot of uh, influence from... Um, real life very frequently there are a lot of other things that some of these creatures do or a lot of other um very very like one-to-one representation not only in their uh abilities but also in their appearance or where they come from uh and it's very very fascinating i mean even pokemon that would be uh even pokemon that would be like almost mystical have a lot of real world influ- in, uh, influence I think one of my favorites is also moves like paralyze or um, like static or poison touch where if you touch something you might poison something um, which is real life to a real life poison dart frog and obviously poison, only poison type Pokemon will learn that and there are several other games, movies, media television that definitely borrow a lot of inspiration from real life and i definitely might want to spend a little more time in the future maybe uh highlighting some other feats from pokemon and just showing you how fascinating and almost um almost zoology zoological this game can be it's it's um really fascinating it's become one of my personal favorite hobbies to be able to relate real life to this game 
uh, and to others as well because as much as I have a passion for animals, I have a passion for games, I have a passion for media, and getting to blend the two together really does add a level of enjoyment to these series for me. And I hope that they can add a level of enjoyment to you as well if you like that sort of thing. Um, definitely, if you guys want to hear more about that, please leave a comment because I would love to hear more about that. Um, but regardless, we're always having fun here at the GSMC Pets Podcast. So I'd like to thank you all today for listening to the GSMC Pets Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. If you like what you heard today, please leave a comment below. Also consider subscribing to us. It helps us out a lot. Also, if you'd like to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, that would be a huge help. And until then, I hope you have a great day. See you next time. You've been listening to the GSMC Pets Podcast, part of the GSMC Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcasts on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all of the shows from the GSMC Podcast Network. From movies to music, from sports to entertainment, from business news to weird news. Follow us on Twitter and Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's podcast. <laughs>